Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, for the penultimate episode, 299. I mean, penultimate episode to 300. So episode 299 of Elite Wine TV. Who thought I would get this far? Not a lot of people. I didn't know how far I was gonna go. I didn't know at all, but all I knew is I was gonna sit in front of a camera and uh, blab on about wine as if I knew something. Back then, I knew a little bit about wine, but I definitely didn't know as much as I do now. So um, I, I know sometimes I come across as maybe not knowing a lot, but I do know a lot about a lot of wines. I'm just not a specialist in any one particular area. All right, so, um, and that's part of being a wine reviewer of all the wines in the world because you, you just never really focus on anything. But um, that just means I get to enjoy everything. So let's get into this one. Oh, yeah. So episode 300, real quick. April 28th, Max's Wine Dive. If you're going to be in the audience, you need to be there 6.30-ish because we start broadcasting precisely at 7 p.m. Or as close to 7 p.m. as I can do. I'm going to have a countdown going on the live feed. That'll be on my justin.tv channel. So right here below, that is the Eventbrite link also on the website. Um, if you're going to be in the audience, you need to go to that to register. We have limited seating. Um, that way I know you're coming. That way you let Max's Wine Dive know that you're coming. You will be paying Max's for everything. I don't get any money out of this. All right. Uh, here's the Justin.tv link. If you're going to watch on the live feed, that starts at 7 o'clock. From 6.30 to 7, there's not really going to be anything going on. You're pretty much going to have no audio and you're just going to have a clock counting down to 7 or to whenever I'm gonna actually hit go and, and, and go on with this. So, uh, anyway, let's drop some of that Pinot Noir out of there. Let's get into the next wine. You know, I probably, should, I have no idea if this wine is gonna be good or not. I just bought it today, just like I did the Pinot Noir. Um, probably should have maybe had done an ex, you know, wine that I expected to be pretty good. I have no idea. This could be a pretty fabulous wine. I don't know. Anyway, another random wine selection at World Market. So last episode, I told you how I did it. So this one was, I forgot, I forgot which um, number it was, but it was the Cabernet Sauvignon rack. And I had, I think I had like 12 choices. Actually, it was 11 because they had a double, they had a double label uh, on one of it. So this is one that picked. Oh, actually, the first one I picked, <laughs> see, honestly, I should have done it because the first one I picked was like a $26 bottle of wine. And I was like, no, because I know that unless I drink that bottle tonight after, after doing all this, that I'll end up dumping it out in three weeks when I get back in town. And I didn't want to waste a $26 bottle of wine. So yeah, I, I'm trying to make sure the purchase was under 10 bucks. So if I didn't finish it, I didn't feel like I was throwing money down the drain. All right. So, so no offense, Castle Rock for being the penultimate, but, um, you know, I don't know, all three, well, the Pinot was pretty good. The other two whites were outstanding. I kind of want to drink them both tonight. So this is the 2011 Paso, uh, Castle Rock from Paso Robles, a Cabernet Sauvignon. And um, anyway, Castle Rock, let's talk about them real quick. Um, they were founded in 1994. The founder is Greg Popovich. No, not that one. This one spells his name G-R-E-G, -E whereas the San Antonio Spurs, 18 in a row on March 31st, because that's when I'm recording this, beat Indiana Pacers. Man, we beat them down, too. It wasn't even like a, like a close game. And with just under four minutes left, they, they put all the second team in because Indiana said, we're not going to win. We're like, they were down 22 points. Fabulous win. Way to go, Spurs. So 
this is like, well, this should be, well, this is after the season ended. So I know we have number one seed for the Western Conference, and so we should. Um, hopefully we, we retain number one seed for, um, well, I should say, we probably have number one seed over the Eastern Conference teams. Um, we still should have number one seed for the Western Conference. Anyway, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna exact revenge, whether we play Miami or not. I don't care. So anyway, let's get into this wine. Um, Found in 1994, uh, blah, 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 blah. By the way, Greg Popovich of the Spurs, he spells his name G-R-E-G-G. Um, and he also is in the wine, A to Z winery. Is, he's an investor in the wine, in that winery. So uh, see, based in California, they have four wineries, actual wineries, based in Sonoma, Napa, Willamette, and the Columbia Valley of, in Washington. Um, so they've been around for a little while, and uh, like 20 years. And... Uh, uh, they, they've got a pretty big operation. They, uh, they're, they're, I, their goal is to make value wines, to make good wines with a good value. I mean, they've gotten some really good ratings over the years. I'm going to, from what their website said, they've gotten 90 point plus ratings from major wine magazines, not just, you know, state fairs, um, but from, you know, things like Wine Spectator and all that. So uh, let's check this out. I'm actually excited to check this out because I think it might be pretty good. Oh, color. I barely got into the nose, so. Color. So, really, really purple. Garnet. Uh, a little bit of rim variation to the edge, but really deep in the center. And really, when I, when I, this is the type of color I can really see um, on the glass. Not a whole lot of staining, but a little bit of staining on the glass. Do you remember I've had another red wine in here? Um... Yeah, okay. Don't really see much on that. Like, nothing. But that also could be just from the light. Here we go. Now I can see the staining or the tears. Okay. It's really hard to see in that lighting. So let's get into this. Now we're starting off pretty good. I don't hate the wine yet for from the... Uh, I feel... I'm sorry, guys. Castle Rock people. I'm not trying to be a jerk or anything. All right, so I get I get um, raspberry candy. I get that a lot with um, with this type of Cabernet Sauvignon. I don't really get any pyrazine yet. I hope to get some soon. It's clean. Oh oh. I might have gotten a little pyrazine whiff there because I'm looking for it, I think, but it was like really faint. I really, I really do get kind of like a little bit of pepper notes. You know, the black pepper maybe, maybe some white pepper. This is going to be a wine I'm going to try and then I'm going to pour another glass because I really think that that's the second pour is really where I'm going to find everything. Mm-hmm. Actually, I mean, I'm going to pour another, I'm going to do another pour, but I'm already starting to get some good stuff out of this. Good tannins. Um, I say medium plus on the tannins. Um, so get really kind of that, that raspberry. I kind of get a little fuzziness from the tannins, really. Um, acidity is medium, medium plus. I'll probably medium. Um, I get the pepper again. I haven't really gotten the pyrazine that I'm expecting because it is cab. Uh, it doesn't mean you has to have it. It's just it is a character, one characteristic of it. But that's a characteristic I like to get out of a out of a cab. Um, it's 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 chewy, like like almost juicy. All right. Um, it is Paso Robles versus Napa or Sonoma, so it doesn't have some of those qualities. It doesn't feel like it's overly oaked. I don't get a lot of creaminess out of it. I don't get a lot of wood out of it. I get more of a pure fruit flavor out of it. The nose is now a little earthier, so it's not as fruit forward on the nose. I don't get that raspberry candy now. I still get it, but it's not as pronounced. Mm. 
you know, it, it's it's more of a, I'm not going to call it a fruit bomb, but it's definitely fruit driven. Um, really with, I would say kind of raspberry, maybe even a little like darker fruit, some black fruit, I would say maybe some raspberry, black raspberry, um, or blackberry. Uh, that's what I was looking for, not black raspberry, blackberry. Um, yeah. Um, I'm, I wish I'd gotten the pyrazine out of it. Um, there is a little, very, very slight pepperiness out of it. I don't get huge amounts of wood or obvious wood. I don't get any vanilla or coconut. I don't get any actual wood flavor. Um, I'm sure it's seen wood. It might not be new oak. It might be older oak. But, uh, you know, it's it's a juicy wine. Um, it's a 10, oh, did I say how much I paid for it? I, in the lower third it said it, but um, this was normally $10.99 and I got it for $6.99, okay? Listen, it, any store, any wine shop or liquor store that you, or any store that you can get into a, a type of discount program, do it. I mean, this alone, I saved six bucks on these two bottles of wine. So, I mean, I paid all told, including tax, sixteen twenty-two, and I would have paid over twenty-two dollars, almost twenty-three dollars, twenty-three dollars for these wines for two wines. So, uh, you know what? So let's say it's an eleven-dollar bottle of wine normally, and I got it for seven bucks. You know, for seven dollars, heck yeah, this is you know a good drinking red wine. Even at eleven dollars, I still I still feel it's a good value. But if you can get this wine for seven, eight, nine dollars, so you can get a couple dollars off on it, you can totally go for it. I'm also trying to get a little more air into this thing. Whoops. Um. You know, I, I kind of get a little, it's still juicy and fruity, but as it's sitting in the glass a little longer, I kind of get a little, maybe a little hint of wood to it. So I really think that this wine is developing. I almost just got a hint of caramel too. So I really think this is a wine that, you know, we love to say, well, we wanted to can't, you know, the $100 bottle of wine or the $500 bottle of wine because it's gonna really open up. You know what, a $10 bottle of wine can benefit from decanting, from sitting out, from taking time. It, it really can't, any wine, whether it's red or white, can benefit from exposure to the air and all that. So I would say this kind of bottle of wine, you can make it as something you start off with um, if you're gonna have some, some dinner, but totally decant it and take your time drinking it. Don't chug it. Um, I like the wine, I would recommend it. Whether it's $11 or $7, I would recommend it. Um, I'm very happy <clears throat> that I like the wine. Um, because, you know, a lot of times when I, when I buy these um, inexpensive wines, these value wines, I kind of get a little jaded that they're not as good as I was hoped they would be. But, you know what, there, there's some good wine out there that's being made. I mean, is this going to compete with, with uh, Latour and Lafitte? No, but it's not meant to. It's not supposed to. Okay? But I think it's as good as anything else out there at the, from that price point. So, yeah. All right, so be there. April 28th, Max's Wine Dive or Justin.tv. Watch it live. I hope to see a lot of great faces in the crowd. Um, I hope to see some tweets. Um, while I'm doing the episodes, it's kind of hard for me to be on Twitter. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll run a I see it's gonna be kind of hard. Well, you know what? I'll have I can have a second. I can have a second uh, laptop there, or I might be running my laptop as as like an internet thing, and I might be bringing the big the big daddy iMac to actually run the show. Because uh, real quick, you when you're gonna do something like that, you want the fastest computer you can use, and. This is a four, it's now, it's now three years old. I bought it in 2011. So three year old, you know, MacBook Pro. It still runs really well, okay? My iMac is also the same age. Um, but let's be honest, that iMac can, can blow this computer away. 
It really can. So um, I might be bringing the big iMac to actually run the video of it and then I'll maybe have this hooked up so I can have a Twitter fall going. Or maybe, maybe I could put the Twitter fall on the TV. That would be kind of cool. Anyway, so let's quit thinking about what I'm gonna do on that. Just uh, show up, whether you're online or at Max's, show up. And uh, I really hope um, everybody does. For 299 episodes, it's been a wonderful ride. 300 is gonna be magnificent. Um, I should have a new intro for that, an actual true new intro, not, I thought making like a special like little intro, but with the with way my training's been going and I've been doing training, not the way it's been going, but that I've been doing training, I just haven't had time to really do what I wanted to do. I was gonna do some cool stuff, but I'm just gonna make sure I have a new intro for 300 because it's about damn time, okay? I mean, I have a green screen and all, I know you don't, it's not back there, but episode 301, we'll be back with the green screen, okay? Um, so we're gonna have a uh, little clips from all those. Um, as always, I wanna thank everybody for stopping by. Friend me up on the links above. Hit that donate button. Click the links below for any of the wines that, that I've done today, the four episodes I did today. Um, you've got the links on the website for, for uh, Eventbrite and for, um, what's that other thing? Ooh, did this just like, no. Um, Eventbrite and Max's, I mean, Eventbrite and Justin TV. Um, that's going to be it. We'll see everybody on April 28th for episode 300.